We Filipinos are known for our hospitality. You know, when every foreigner that I've talked to, pag tinanong ko sila, anong nakita nyo sa mga Pilipino that really attracts you to them, sabi nila, the Filipinos are very hospitable. You know? And uh, in the Philippines, sa mga lugar na puntahan ko, of all the places that I've been to, Aklan is the most famous pagdating sa hospitality in receiving guests, you know? And probably because kultura yan natin dito because of the ati-atihan. Okay? So every year, talagang maraming dumadayo sa Aklan and, uh, you know, it has been our culture to really receive guests. I remember one time, it was ati-atihan day, uh, my mother-in-law prepared a lunch for us so lahat kami pumunta doon sa bahay, doon sa mangga, kumain kami. Then habang kumakain kami, may pumasok na dalawang Israeli. They thought na yung bahay restaurant. So pumasok sila, diretso-diretso sila sa table. you know, And they sat down, tapos order sila ng pagkain. Then we explained to them na this is not a restaurant, this is a home. no, Talagang huya-huya kita sandang daywa. No? So they stood up, yung maasawang nga to, ay gagawa kung ta sandawon. Sorry, sorry for disturbing you. And my mother-in-law said, No, no, we want you to be here. Okay? Ayaw man ako pa now. Eh. You sit down and join us for lunch. Okay? That is very rare in other countries. You cannot just do that. Barge into a home and, you know, uh, sit down with the family and eat. But in Aklan, in Kalibo particularly, we can do that. Especially in Atiatihan season. Hospitality is very important in biblical times, if you notice that. That's why when Jesus went to Samaria and He was not welcome there, malaking issue talaga yun. Okay? Because during the time of Jesus, it is very important, and the Bible teaches this, to receive strangers into your home. Okay? Hospitality is very important in biblical times and even in our culture here in the Philippines. I remember one time, Bishop Dick and I went to the mountains, pumunta kami sa Manaling, and he was supposed to give a seminar on the Holy Spirit. Pagdating namin doon sa Manaling, the day of the seminar, magtuturo siya, konti lang yung tao. Siguro limang tao lang nandun. And sabi ni Bishop Dick, saan na yung mga tao? Sabi ko, Bishop, nagluluto silang lahat. Okay? Everyone was busy cooking for him because yung mga tagamanaling talagang mahal na mahal nila si Bishop. They love him so much that they prepared, they wanted to prepare something na magugustuhan ni Bishop, paborito ni Bishop. So lahat ng tao, instead of coming to the seminar, nandun sa kusina. And they were cooking there. And sabi ko, Bishop, lima lang yung a-attend kasi busy lahat, nagluluto para sa'yo. And the Bishop said, no, no, you call those people, tawagin mo sila. Okay? Sabi niya sa akin, mabubuhay ako kahit walang kain. <laughs> okay? And he said to me that the reason why I'm here is because I would like to teach them the Word and it's important that they listen to the Word. So medyo tumigil muna, tinawag ko yung mga tao. I called them, sabi ko, stop cooking, tama na muna yung preparation nyo, let's go to the church, and let's listen to what uh, Pastor Dick has to say. Okay? So today, in the Gospel, we see this, this uh, trait ng hospitality, how important it is. Because performing tasks of hospitality entails service. Okay? When you are inviting guests, when you are receiving guests into your home, it means that you are going to serve them. Okay? And performing services because of our hospitality, it is so vital in making the church a welcoming and well-functioning community. Okay? The church, the church becomes, the church becomes a Thank you, brother. 
the church becomes a well-functioning community. In other words, it's not just a community that sits down and is not active. The church becomes a well-functioning community, a welcoming community, when it is a community that is very hospitable. Okay? Kaya nga, ini-encourage ko sa atin, when you see people coming to church for the first time, hindi nyo kilala ang muka nila, and they come to church for the first time, try to make them feel that they are welcome in this place. Okay? Never treat someone who comes to our church as a stranger. So, anong gagawin natin pag may mga bisita tayo and people comes to church? Kasi marami na nagtatanong ngayon sa atin because we are on mission. They're asking, saan bang St. Michael na yan? Where is St. Michael? And some of these people will come to church. Okay? And the first time they come to church, first impressions are very important. Okay? Sometimes, when they come, talagang hiyang-hiya sila, and you know, they feel so, uh, when they come in, medyo nahihiya sila. But if we are the kind of people who are a welcoming people, if we will be true to our hospitality culture, okay, we would approach these people, we would not wait for them to engage us. We will engage them right away. Okay? Hindi na yung, anong pangalan mo? Hindi. Pag nakita nyo sila, punta ka kagad. Ako si Sister Pass. What's your name? Okay. And, and that attitude is very important during biblical times. It is very important in the time of Jesus. And it is still very important for us today. Because a, a welcoming, okay, a welcoming church, a functioning church, meaning to say we are serving each other, especially our friends, our visitors who would come to us. We are here to serve them. Okay? When that happens, our community begins to grow. It becomes a vital community. And that's something we need to understand. But sometimes there is a danger. When we begin to serve, when we begin to help others, there is a danger that we become too busy because of the activities. Okay? Now, is it wrong to be busy? Okay, it's not wrong. I know some of you here, masyadong busy kayo. Some of you here wake up very early in the morning, natutulog pa lahat ng tao, gising na kayo, and you're already preparing. Okay? Preparing for your business, for the people who will be working there, you're already preparing for your children who are going to school. So, we live today in an environment where everyone is busy. And sometimes we think, ano yan, masama ba yung busy tayo? It's not wrong. But what is wrong is when our busyness every day begins to trouble us. We become worried and we become distracted in life. That is where the danger comes in. That's why may nagtanong sa akin, sabi nila, Father John, ano bang importante? What is more important? To just sit down and pray and listen to God or to serve and become busy in the ministry? What is more important? What do you think? Huh? Which is more important? To be active, to be busy in serving other people, in helping other people, or just to sit down and listen to God and pray to God, which is more important. Okay. Okay. The answer to that question is this. Which is more important in breathing, to inhale or to exhale? Huh? Which is more important in breathing? To inhale or exhale? Pareho. You cannot inhale without exhaling first. And you cannot exhale without inhaling. So both are important. 
So when you ask which is more important to serve others, to be active in the ministry in helping other people, or to just sit down and pray and listen to God? Well, the answer is both. But in our gospel today, some people would misinterpret this. Ang sinasabi na, okay, tamo, ayaw ni Jesus niyong masado kitang masako. Pata ni Ila, ro ginoo nga masako kita permiay. Gusto it ginoo, ay gapungko yung kitag magpamati ka na. Is that really what the Bible tells us? Okay? We will go through the gospel today and we find out that Jesus was going through this particular town and in that particular town, He has friends there. In fact, sabi nga nila, relative niya. Si Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, magkakapatid niya. And they are relatives of Jesus. And they're very close to Jesus. So when Jesus went to that place, they invited Him to come to their home. Okay? Now, hindi lang si Jesus ang inibita. Hindi nila sinabi, okay, Jesus, ikaw lang yung mga disciples mo, iwan mo lang sa labas. Remember, when Jesus would travel, He would travel with... 12 disciples, and sometimes there are other disciples who would go with them. So, nung in-invite siya, ibig sabihin, pati yung kasama niya, pasok. So, when they were already inside the house, Jesus started to teach. You know, ang galing ng bisita na yan, you know, that guest, when he comes to your house, he would teach you, he would share his words with you. So, true enough, Nung pagpasok ni Jesus doon and He was beginning to teach, the two sisters, okay, Mary started to get busy in preparing for the Lord. Hindi, na, hindi sinabi kung anong, anong pinagkabalahan niya. No, the Bible does not mention what was she busy about, no? But I would just guess, siguro pareho ni Bishop, everyone is busy preparing a meal for Jesus. So there we see Martha preparing, nagluluto, you know. Ang daming bisita. Okay lang sana kung isa lang yung bisita mo. But when you have more than 10 people coming over to your home, you know, just imagine, no? Kung ano kabisi yan. So Martha started to prepare, started to, you know, slice, Iwa ng sibuyas, you know, preparing the meal. And her younger sister, Mary, was supposed to help her, to assist her, because that is what women do in the time of Jesus. If there is a special guest in the home, all the men should be there with the guests to entertain the guests, but the women will be in the kitchen preparing the meal. But not Mary, because Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus to listen to Jesus. You know, that position of sitting down to listen to Christ, that is reserved for the men, especially disciples of Christ. Para yan sa mga lalaki and mga disciples ni Jesus. But Mary, okay, went beyond the boundaries of culture, she sat down and she started to listen to Christ, leaving her sister Martha to do all the work. So sa kalagitnaan ng trabaho and busy, you know, Martha became so upset, so troubled, that she went outside, paglabas niya, itong sinabi niya kay Jesus. Okay? This is what she said to Jesus. Sabi niya, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Okay? So notice this. Siguro pagod na pagod na si Martha. Martha has been doing a lot of work. And you know, si Mary nandun naka, nakaupo. Sitting down at the feet of Jesus. Seemingly not doing anything. And so Martha became so upset that she went out of the kitchen probably and came to Christ. And itong una niyang sinabi kay Lord, sabi niya, Lord, don't you care? <laughs> the Jesus who died on the cross for all of us does not care. That was what Martha said. Sabi niya, Lord, don't you care? Okay. 
Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work? You know, iniwan ako ng kapatid ko. Don't you care? Iniwanan ako. I'm doing the work myself, alone. My sister is not even helping me. Now, sabi niya, tell her to help me. Pakisabi naman sa kapatid ko na yan. Tell her na tulungan naman ako. Okay? So, three things he, did. he said to Jesus. Jesus does not care. Okay? Second thing, you're asking a guest to intervene with your problem. That is not good. May, may bisita ka, huwag mo ipasok sa problema ng pamilya nyo. Okay? And now he's telling Jesus to do something about their problem at home. Which is not good for hospitality. No? Pag may mga bisita tayo, as much as possible, we would like our guests to be comfortable. Okay? But not Martha. And now, listen to the words of Christ. Supposedly, pwede niyang sabihin, O Mary, tulungan mo yung kapatid mo. No? Jesus could have done that. Jesus could have said that. But this is what Jesus said. Sabi niya, Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen what is better. And I will not, it will not be taken away from her. It seems like kinampihan pa ni Lord yung kapatid. Pero wise din si Mary, alam mo, nung pinagalitan siya ng sister niya, hindi siya sumagot. Okay? One lesson we have to learn, when somebody accuses you, somebody comes to you to accuse you, huwag kang sumagot, let Jesus speak for you. And true enough, yun ang ginangyari. Tumahimik lang si Mary, and Jesus now spoke on her behalf. Wise talaga. And this is what Jesus said to Martha, 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 Okay? The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things. Now, some people will now say, Okay, tamo, ayaw ni Lord talagang busy tayo palagi. Gusto ni Lord, dyan tayo nakikinig at na, uupo lang and listen and pray to Him. And this is how the scripture is interpreted. But you would read closely yung sinabi ni Lord na Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. I don't hear this as something na pinapagalitan ni Jesus si Martha. Ganun ba yung, this is, ganito bang dating sa inyo? Do you believe Jesus was rebuking Martha? Martha, Martha. No, why he was rebuking? No. I don't think that Jesus was rebuking Martha. I think, sa akin lang to, and maybe you would think the same, I think Jesus was inviting Martha. Martha, join us. Okay? Hindi siya pinapagalitan. But Christ was just inviting her, Martha, Martha, you are worried about many things. You are upset. Okay? Only one thing is needful. Isa lang naman talagang kailangan sa buhay natin. And Mary has chosen that part and it will not be taken away from her. It seems like Christ was telling her, Martha, sit down with us. Join us. Okay? And here we see, number one, we have to renew our mind to this. God is not against us when we are busy. God is not against us when we do the work of serving Him and serving other people. God is never against us when we are active actively participating in the life of the church as a community. What is Christ warning each and every one of us is when we become distracted and we become worried or anxious. Okay? Ito ang kino-confront ni Lord sa atin. Not our activity, not our serving others, but our tendency to be worried because of many, many work, we become distracted. The Greek word for distracted 
Okay? It implies it implies being pulled apart in many directions. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng distracted sa grid. Hinihila ka na sa lahat ng direction. In other words, you do not see where you're going anymore. Sa sobrang busy mo, hindi mo na alam yung goal and purpose why you're doing the work. You are now pulled away into many directions. You become distracted and because of that, you become worried. Ito lang ang sinasabi ni Lord. Okay? And the solution to that, when you begin to get worried, you begin to become anxious because of the work and serving and helping other people. It's now time to sit down. Okay? And listen to Jesus. The goal of hospitality is to pay attention to your guest. Martha failed to do that because she became distracted by her work. It's not wrong to be busy with your work. What is wrong is when you become distracted and eventually you become anxious in life. Remember, the Scripture teaches us, do not worry. Utos yan ni Lord, not to worry. Because worry can never add anything good in your life. It will not add many days in your life. Okay? And to be distracted is not good for us. So anong solution dyan? The solution for that is once again, to rest, to sit down, rest in the presence of God, and pay attention to what He is saying to us. Kailangan natin yan. In a culture of hectic schedule, we live in a culture of a hectic schedule. Mga parents, mga nagtatrabaho, yung may mga negosyo, you have, you know, deadlines to meet. Lahat tayo busy. In this kind of culture that we become relentless in pursuing productivity. Okay? We are tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are. There are people Pag hindi sila busy, ang akala nila wala silang kwenta. There are people who get busy because that is where they get their worth. If I'm not busy, then I am useless to my family. Okay? In this culture of very hectic schedule, we begin to develop that kind of attitude. We begin to get our worth from how busy we are. We get our worth from what we have accomplished in life. Sometimes we think, kung wala naman tayong na-accomplish, parang walang kwenta ang buhay natin. Why? Because because of this culture of very hectic schedule, this culture of a very fast uh, pace of life, we draw our worth from the accomplishments we make. We think that we are very important when we accomplish so much. But when we do not accomplish anything, we feel worthless. Yan ang nangyayari. Sometimes we get our worth by how well we meet the expectation of others. You know? There are people who work hard because they're expected to work hard. Okay? Okay? Sometimes nagtatrabaho tayo, we become busy because we do not want to fail the expectation of other people. Baka hindi na nila ako tanggapin. Baka hindi na nila ako mahalin. Dapat magtrabaho at magtrabaho ako. Okay. But we begin to realize that our worth is not by what we produce, our worth is not taken from our busyness or how well we accomplish things. Our worth is based upon of who we are. 
We are God's children. And God loves us as we are, whether we produce or not. Our self-worth is derived from our relationship with God. God values your life for who you are. God values your life not because you can accomplish much for Him, not because you can do many things for Him. No, God values you. He values your life because you are loved by Him. And sometimes we forget that when we become busy. That's why we become worried now. Nag-worry na tayo. We become so distracted. We are pulled apart in many directions that we become upset and we become troubled. And Jesus does not want that to happen to us. So we need to find rest to sit down, to listen, okay? Because if our activities leave us with no time to be still in the Lord's presence and hear God's word, we are likely to end up anxious and troubled. We are likely to end up with a kind of service that is devoid of love and joy and is resentful of other people. You know, pag busy tayo, trabaho na lang trabaho. And we don't take time to rest and process things and listen to God. You know what happens? Yung trabaho natin, the work we are producing, it is without love anymore. Okay? The work that you are now doing is joyless. Wala na talagang saya yung ginagawa mo. And not only that, your work now, your activity, your serving others, you become resentful of other people. And I have seen this in my 30 years of ministry. I have seen people who are going through the motion of serving God, pero wala na talaga yung love. Basta gawin na lang. Kasi obligasyon ko yan, eh, trabaho ko yan. And you go through your work every day. And ito mga sinasabi ng tao, ang bigat na ng paamo sa trabaho. Bakit? Wala na yung joy mo eh. People begin to murmur in their work. You know, we are supposed to love the work that God has given us. Amen? I have the greatest job in the world today. My job is to help other people. My job is to bring people to Christ. My job is to encourage people about God. That is the greatest job in the world for me. And I'm supposed to enjoy that every day. But without spending time with God anymore, listening to His voice, listening to Him telling you how much He loves you, my service now becomes joyless. And remember this, a service to God without love and joy, that is nothing, no matter how great it is. Mother Teresa once said, sabi niya, don't attempt to do great things for God. Never. What you should do instead, sabi niya, is every day do little things for God, but with great love and joy. Okay? Don't attempt. Sabi nga ni St. Paul, what good is it if you give your body to be burned? What good is it okay, to give your body to be burned, to serve God, to suffer to, for God, but without love, you are nothing. What is important is that we do the work with the love of Christ with the joy of Christ. Because without love and joy, what happens? Our work becomes a burden. And when the work becomes burden, we become grumbling and murmuring people. When we begin to grumble, when we begin to murmur, we become resentful of other people. Marami na tayong kagalit. Galit na ako dito, galit ako doon, galit ako sa kanya because, you know, itong sinasabi, itong tingin sa akin. You know, you get angry with people. Why? The problem is people 
Ano bang problema ang tao, ang trabaho mo? What is the problem? The problem now is here. You are going through the motions of work and serving. No more love. No more joy. That's why you become resentful of other people. You resent others. You even will resent those whom you are serving. And that is not good. And this is what Christ was telling Martha, 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 join us. Rest. Come to me, all of you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is the burden that Christ gives us is light? Because we are in His presence, we hear His voice, we are inspired by Him. That's why ang trabaho natin hindi mabigat. Alam mo, hindi mabigat ang trabaho kung nagmamahal ka. Okay? Hindi mabigat ang trabaho ng isang asawa kung siya'y umiibig sa kanyang asawa. The burden of taking care of children is not hard for a mother when the mother loves his children very much. And that is the kind of service that Christ is looking for. And it all begins when we learn to take time to listen to God. Because listening to God, hearing the voice of God every day, out of that listening, out of that spending time in the presence of the Lord, that is where real service will flow. That is where service that is acceptable to God will flow. Once you begin to listen and hear and feel and experience the love of God. In His presence, there is the fullness of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We have to have the strength of God to serve our God. And where do we get that strength? We get that strength from the joy we have. Where is that joy coming from? It is from the presence of the Lord. That is where our joy comes in. That's why hindi napapagod yung nanay. Araw-araw gigising ng umaga, magluluto para sa mga anak niya. The priest should not get tired of praying every day for everyone in the church. The priest should not get tired of preparing the homily, the Word of God, listening to God, to give to the people so the people will be nourished by the Word. Walang pagod tayo na nagsiserve for each other because that joy in us it strengthens us it renews our strength every day those who wait upon the lord those who wait upon the lord those who sit down and wait on god to listen to god they will mount up with wings like eagle they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and never get tired amen Lastly, remember this. When you try to serve God without being nourished by God's Word, it is like expecting good fruit to grow from a tree that has been uprooted. Okay? Let me re repeat that. Trying to serve God or others without being nourished by the presence and Word of God is like expecting a good fruit to come out from a tree that is already uprooted. Pag binunot mo yung isang puno, pag pinutol mo yung isang puno, don't expect fruit to come out from it anymore. It's the same thing with us. Once we detach ourselves, we disconnect ourselves from the presence of God, we don't have time anymore to be in the presence of God, to listen to Him, to experience His loving presence. When we don't have time for that anymore, we are already uprooting ourselves. And we're trying to produce fruit na wala naman tayong connection sa Diyos na. It cannot be. It cannot be done. And Jesus knows this very well. 
both listening and doing, receiving God's Word and serving others are important to the Christian life. Yes, we need to serve. Yes, we need to help others. Yes, we need to do the work of the kingdom. But we also need to listen to God. We also need to receive God's Word. It's important in our Christian life. Today, Jesus invites us all. He invites us all who are worried and distracted by the many things that we need to do. Bringing the children to school, preparing for their school. Ito, malapit na yung anniversary natin. We have so much work to do. We are inviting people to come to the church, you know? And we have so much things to prepare for them. Busy, busy na tayo. Okay? So it is important that we listen to God's invitation to sit down and take time to rest in His presence, to hear His words of grace and truth, to know that we are loved and we are valued by God not because of what we can produce for God. We are loved and valued by God because we are God's beloved children. Get that worth from that. Okay? And from that, good works, service, genuine service will flow from your life. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit.